Good morning, dearly beloved. So good to see the both of you here and everyone who's online and also who is listening on a podcast. I would like to pray to the beginning. Jesus, you're awesome. We love you. We thank you that you're interested in us, that you're interested in our hearts, you're interested in our lives. And I pray, Lord, that as we encounter you this morning, that you would just draw close to us, that our hearts will be open to what you have to say for us, that our hearts will be open to hear, to listen, to understand. And I pray, Lord, that not my words or my philosophy will be preached, but that what you want, that what, what's interesting for you, that what, what you want to tell everyone and each one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence and believe that you're with us. Amen. All right, let us open the Bible in Psalm 23, of course. <laughs> The, what, just uh, why we look for Psalm 23 in the Bible, I, just, uh, I always find it so interesting that the last few, like I would say nearly a year now, always when I, when, I, uh, when I have the honor to preach, it's so interesting that the Lord always draws me to Psalm 23. It's, the, it's just like nearly a year now where it's always this. And I, I don't know, it has like each verse, I mean, it has only like six verses, verses but it's still, they're, they're so true. Each one of them has such a depth, and if you think about it, you, I don't know. It's just amazing. So let us read verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. So cool. So good. I mean, you look, uh, you know who wrote this, right? David. And if you think about the life of David, you see a guy who had, I would say, if I would say how, how your life is, I would say his life was very interesting, very challenging. I would say it wasn't very easy for him. He had, when he was very young, he was anointed to be king. And you would think once you get the anointing, everything starts and you're going to be king and you're going to have all the benefits and all the and all the old people love you and everything. But no, for him, he was anointed and his daily life continued. You would have to think that once you get anointed, like, uh, to, I don't know, to be president of something, and then you would, next day you start and you get, and you get everything you want. But no, you actually have to still wait several, uh, yeah, I, I don't know really how long he had to wait, but he had to wait some time. And imagine you get what you want or what, what, well, not say what you want, but you get anointed to do something and you have to wait for a very long time. That is something that, I don't know, would be pretty interesting, to say at least. But God is not really, God. if we look at how God does life, how he does life with us, we know that he's always interested in our heart. He's always interested in how our perspective of things are. So David, he was anointed king. So then he went back to do his daily routine and God developed his heart even further. You see, in the time before, um, you see, we, hear, we, listen, we read stories of how he, yeah, how he, or how he just, yeah, let's just read it before I paraphrase it, let's read it. Go to 1 Samuel 17. First Samuel 17, verse, verse 36. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. So you know the story David and Goliath? There was this guy who mocked her. I love how, how David says... He defied the armies of the living God. David knew who his God was. He knew who his God is. So he said, hey, he mocked our God. I know my God because my God protected me from lions, from bears. He protected me when I was tending the, the, the herd of the sheep. I knew my God. I knew who is with me. And we look at this, we look at this story, how, how David has challenge after challenge after challenge. 
and God develops his heart. God is more interested in the heart of David than his status in, in life. He was more interested in what is David's heart going to be like when one day he's going to rule over my kingdom, over my people Israel, who is going to rule them. And he's looking for someone who has a heart that is pure, a heart that, that loves him, that's devoted to him, because he knew that if he has someone who listens to him, he, when he has someone who is interested in him, he knew that he could give him instructions and he would tend his people, he would tend his flock, and they will, be, they will prosper, they will be happy. So let's go to 1 Samuel 17, verse 44. Uh, my Bible is a bit small, sorry, I need to, <laughs> need to find it. Come here, he's, uh, oh, nope, sorry. Here, I will was, I start at verse 34 to give you a bit of uh, story. Meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him kept coming closer to God. He looked David over and saw that he was a little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, and he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. animals, animals. And I now, I love this. This is so, so, so encouraging for me what David says. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that, uh, that there is a God in Israel. If you look at your life, you see um, you might have some circumstances that aren't very good. You might have some circumstances that challenge you. And you know what? We all do. We all go through life with situations that are not easy we all go through life where, and we have challenges and the thing is god never promised us that everything will be good in life he never promised us that we would never have any troubles he promised us to be there with us when we have troubles he promised that when situations come he will give us the strength to soar above the problems to not be intimidated by them but to choose not to be afraid for me my life i've seen that no matter what I do, I will I come through life and I'll see situations will pop up and there will be a situation I'll be like, okay, what do I do? I have to step two steps back and I have to think, okay, I see this situation, what am I going to do? Am I going to be afraid or am I going to choose to go ahead and know that my God is with me? When we read um, Joshua, the story of Joshua, you know, Joshua uh, chapter one, verse nine, it says, have I not commanded you? Be afraid, be be, don't be afraid, sorry, and be courageous. Have an, God actually commanded him, be courageous. So if you look at your life and you see the challenges, why don't you take that Bible verse for you into your hand and into your heart and just say, hey God, I choose to be courageous. I choose to believe that you are with me. Sometimes, you know, you may have to proclaim it. You have to say, hey Lord, I might have this problem in my life right now, but I know you're bigger. A couple, couple years ago, when I was still working in retail, um, uh, it was very interesting. I made a mistake in, um, in a store, and I was very afraid that any, someone really would find out. And the, whole, the night before, I was so afraid. I was thinking about it, what's going to happen the next day? How are people going to treat me? What's my boss going to tell to me? And I prayed to God, and I was so afraid. I was very mediocre, very... I, I didn't... Uh, the funny thing is, I actually was already, I actually was a believer already, but I didn't know the truths of the word of God. I didn't know the truths of my identity in Jesus Christ. So I was so afraid, and I prayed, and I, and, and I was so afraid, and I lost so much sleep. And the next day, I go to work, and you know what? Nobody said a thing. Nobody cared about what I did. And, you know, I thought, like, wow, thank you, Jesus, for that, but how much time I gave the enemy and just dwelling on th things that might happen. And when we look at the life of David, we see that he, he had those problems too, but you know what? He knew his God. He knew who was with him. He knew which person is following him around. Let us open Psalm 18. Psalm 
Psalm 18, verse 1. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock and where I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I have been saved from my enemies. You see here how, how it's written, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. You know, no matter what I say to you this morning, I can, I can encourage you, I can give you some words that might help you, but in the end, you need to open your heart for God. You need to decide to let God in and believe what this beautiful book says. I mean, this book, it can be a very challenging book if you just take simple, simple parts out of it and don't read the context of everything. You need to read the whole book and see how it's meant and what and how, let's say, who wrote, you need, to go, you need to know the author. You need to know who wrote this so you understand what he meant. You need to know his heart so you know what his plans are for you. And when you go through life, you will have to make the choice to decide when you see an obstacle, what are you going to do? Are you going to say, I'm going to be afraid? Or are you going to say, I know the God of the angel armies. I know the God who is with me and I know the God who is for me. I know the God, he was with me five years ago when I was in retail and I was so afraid and nothing happened. I know the God now who is with me when whatever happens this weekend, was ha whatever happens next week, I know the God, the God is still with me. The last few, the last few weeks uh, were quite interesting for me. Um, I was ill, I was at home for two weeks and in the beginning, I was more like, I was just like uh, resting, which is okay, which you should do. But then after, the, and then after like a week when my head was, when my, my head was okay, I started to um, talk a bit more to God and, and just try to listen if he's trying to tell me something. And he kind of showed me that, yeah, hey, Benny, you work so much, you do so much, and uh, you do, you have more time and you have more quantity of time with me than quality. So you spend more time with me, but you don't go into the depth, you don't go into my heart. So I want you to do this and this to improve your life. And I want you to do this and this so our relationship will get better. And that is what Jesus, God is all about, relationship with you. He loves you so much, he gave his life. He paid such a high price that you could be with him. He does not want you walking around, being afraid, being intimidated by situations. He actually wants you to be courageous. Like he said to Joshua, hey, be strong and courageous. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you now too. For those who are listening on a podcast, I'm pointing my hand into the camera to mean that I'm talking to you. God is so interested in your heart, in your life. He's so interested in a relationship with you because that's where the key lies. If you know your God, you know that he's big. And when you know he's big, you know that when a situation comes, you can just kick it away. You don't have to be afraid. The choice not to be afraid. That is what I'm trying to tell you this morning. You have that choice. That, but it's not like, okay, I choose not to be afraid and now you go throughout life. It's more like, hey, I know my God, I know Jesus. And then when I know Jesus and I know who he is and who I am in him, through that, I have faith. And through faith, I know I can jump over mountains. I can not be afraid. I can choose to believe. I can choose to believe that my God loves me, that the God who says, who said to Joshua, hey, don't be afraid. It's the same God who says to you tonight, to tonight, this morning, that uh, or whenever you're listening this, <laughs> that you don't have to be afraid. You can choose to believe in Jesus Christ. You can choose to believe that, hey, the God who was with David, the God who was with all the heroes of the Bible, he's also with you. And the most amazing thing is he wants your heart. He wants, yes, he wants your time, but he actually wants quality time. He wants your heart. He wants your passion because he knows that when you draw close to him, you get rooted in him. And that was for me. And I realized when I was at home, God didn't tell me he wants to spend more time with me because he want, doesn't want me to do this or that. He actually wants my heart. He actually wants to spend time with me. He wants to know me and I want to know him and I want to be rooted in you. Now, interesting thing, maybe um, a short testimony. So after I, I spent time with God, I, over the last few next days then, uh, the last few weeks, I realized how uh, a calmness came 
came into me. It's like a, like a peace, like, yeah, a calmness. I would say peace, that's the term. Because I'm usually a guy who's like very, the whole time, very active and like, like was doing something and, and, and doing this, doing that, jumping around. And, and then, but I just received this peace. And just, you know, the interesting thing is the only thing I did was just spend time with God. I, d I didn't go around um, declaring, prophesying, peace, peace, peace. No, I was more just like spending time with him, getting to know the Father. And he, he just started to do something in me. So my encouragement to you this morning is, hey, get to know the Father, get to know Jesus, get to know the God who was with David, who was with Joshua, and build your roots in him. Because then when situations come, when you face a good life, you can tell him, hey, problem, you come against me with this, 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 but I come against you with the Lord, with the word of the God, with the God of angel armies. Amen? Jesus, you are amazing, and we love you so much. We thank you that you're interested in our hearts, you're interested in our lives, you're more interested in our hearts than what we do. So I pray, Lord, in, yeah, Encounter us this morning with a new and a fresh wind, a fresh love, where we'll just get to know you in such a way where our hearts will be rooted in you. They will not be rooted in problems or in fear, but they would actually be rooted in who you are. And I thank you, Lord, that the things you speak about us, the thoughts you have about us are beautiful. And I pray that this morning, everyone, each one who's listening, who's watching, will just be drawn close to you, will just encounter you in this way where he can go throughout the week, go throughout this day, and know that no matter what problems, no matter what situations come, you are with them, and you will, you will bless them. Amen.